Hello everyone, it's Shaw here at the Inquisitive Wren. Welcome back to the podcast and welcome to season three. So I only record about, I guess, 24 episodes uh, a year because of my schedule. It doesn't really allow me to do much more, but I'm enjoying it so far. I hope that you are as well. To those of you who've just joined or subscribed and to those of you who continue to watch or listen or watch and listen, uh, because we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, Apple, all streaming podcasts, or all streaming platforms, I should say. Uh, To those of you who continue to support, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And to anyone who has subscribed to the Spotify subscription service, thank you. There'll be some uh, behind-the-scenes uploads. There's already uploads on there that are not on the regular platform um, that are specific to subscribers. So thank you for that. And I'm really pleased that we've gotten to season three. It, it's not year three, it's season three. I'm only in my, I think it's my second year. I've, I've done a year of the podcast, I think. It's really difficult to keep time at times. Uh, but also, I want to say happy autumn to everyone. It's certainly my favorite time of year. I love autumn, winter. I like all seasons, but autumn for me is always special because of the parks and forests. Um, You know, I I love walking in forests and I love the change of color. It's very striking autumn for me. And winter's the same. Winter has this haze, this mist over it. It's, It's extremely inviting for me and mystical and magical and all those things. So those seasons uh, for me represent an aesthetic change of season and you know summer yes we get all the summer flowers and spring and everything yes it blooms um, but there's something very striking and probably because I really like the cold weather I'm one of those people who love the cold I know it's odd but anywhere there's snow I'm there and so today for our very first podcast season three we have Kitty Andrews. Now, Kitty is known as your thought organizer. And we talk a lot about clutter and why clutter, physical clutter, affects how you feel mentally and vice versa. A lot of times we're mentally cluttered, you know, so much going on through your mind. And you may, it may be reflected within your home environment. It could also be reflected with conflicts amongst other people and, you know, clutter, however it exists, mental or physical affects our physical state. And of course, how we feel spiritually and how we navigate mentally. And Kitty knows all about this. We talk about what's worse sort of business or uh, clutter, you know, sometimes you can, if you run a business or have a business, you can get a little bit flustered and cluttered. Things are backed up. You don't catch up. But what's worse, physical or mental clutter? So she gives us some really good examples of uh, case studies she has completed about mental and physical clutter, and they're very interesting. And, of course, I do mention the fact that clutter is very, very different from hoarding. They're two separate things. And I go into that in in a um, a clinical way. We talk about the DSM-5, where it's now, as is all new, is introducing uh, hoarding disorder. It's called hoarding disorder under obsessive compulsive related disorder. So we'll talk about why they're very different and how to stay organized and why uh, she's created this one system, uh, O-N-E, one system. And she's going to tell us about all of that. Kitty's been published in the Los Angeles Tribune magazine. And her website, Declutter the Brain, is up and running, very active. She gives talks. She's got some videos up on YouTube. Kitty really does. She's got about 800 online videos as well on decluttering, the five life pillars of decluttering. But she's also been in USA Today. And it can be really helpful to have someone 
challenge perhaps what's happening in your life, challenge what you do, challenge. And a challenge doesn't always mean it's combative. So somebody close to you may point something out. It has to come from a, you know, spiritually, I think, uh, energetically from a good place, not from someone who's critically judging and shaming you. And that's where Kitty steps in. You know, your friends and family could say things to you, but it will sit with you very differently when a professional, when someone who has no other interest in you except to help you, no other vested interest except a professional one, that can change. It can move the goalposts and can motivate you to make some very positive change in your life. And I thought, what a better way. There's no better way to start out th season three other than with Kitty because she really, it's very simple. You know, she keeps it simple and she also gives us her own story and how and some of the challenges she faces. And it's extreme. It's extraordinary how someone with these challenges can actually turn that into a way to help people. Season three kicks off with Kitty Andrews. Fantastic. Declutter your life. Declutter your brain. Declutter your space. Declutter your energy. All of that. Welcome, Kitty Andrews. Kitty, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, well, you talk about and you work in an area that I absolutely love. I think the idea of clutter, because it may look different for other people. Some people think, oh, those are my possessions or those are my heirlooms. But then some people like this minimalist style. So I would like to start out by asking you about physical clutter first, and then we'll talk about the mental aspects of how... Sure clutter affects us all so how would physical clutter look how would it appear to people how would you know it's clutter well that, that's a that's a really good question especially a good question to start with because when you know the expression one man's trash is another man's treasure right and um something that i touch on I have weekly topics, and one of my weekly topics is exactly that, uh, collector, clutterer, or hoarder. Because one person, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick example. Um, a gentleman, when I was still had my cleaning business, I was, um, doing their place so they could, so they could, uh, sell. And he had an entire room in the basement, a nine by 12 room devoted to the band kiss every piece of memorabilia that you that you could have but it was it was all nicely arranged you know obviously meant to be appreciated uh now his wife he, she could have said oh the clutter room right but she appreciated that he appreciated now then you move to uh what what we call clutter, which I don't even really like that word, but it, it, it is what it is, right? Um, is generally defined by the uh, DSM-5 as being random objects in, in places where, where they don't really belong. Say, for example, the toothbrush in the living room or um, piles of of uh, unrelated objects or papers or whatever now it's it may it it only becomes a problem and we, the, the, I'll, I'll touch on hoarders but hoarders are that that's that starts to go into your realm of, of mental of mental illness and i always if i if i suspect something like that and i've been in a hoarder's home and i knew that i couldn't do anything uh when i was still doing things in person and i just went and said i i the person has to want the help before before I can help them. So, so having said that, I'll go back to clutter if that's okay. Yes, is clutter. How it, would it look? It generally, uh, well, say for example, 30 years worth of Christmas decorations. 
Yeah. Uh, where you just keep accumulating, then you don't really know what to do with it, or it's sentimental. Oh, I can't, I can't get rid of that ornament because Aunt Daisy gave it to me, kind of, kind of thing. And eventually, you end up being the the person, anybody becomes paralyzed and overwhelmed analysis paralysis they do they just sit and, there's so much and so many decisions mm. decision fatigue that's involved that you just say i'll do it tomorrow right and uh, i've been guilty of that <laughs> we all have. yes of course uh, now, when it's again, when it start, when clutter starts to take over your life, or make thing make um, make daily living inconvenient or unmanageable in extreme cases, that's when there's some time that uh, things uh, things have to change. Or if your partner is really st- you're you're ashamed to invite people over, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's just basically an uh, an accumulation. Now, one could say that my spare room is cluttered. Well, I've just moved, but everything is packed nicely and and it's all good. It's not spread all over the living room like it was. <laughs> At one point, hey, you've moved to you've moved house. <laughs> Everybody has at one point, of course. But those are good points, Kitty. So what about the mental clutter? Because as you just mentioned, all of that analysis paralysis. All of that, you're looking around, you, and there's all this stuff. What does that do to your mental state? Oh, the, the what does the physical clutter do to the mental clutter? I, I firmly believe that physical clutter and mental clutter are inextricably entwined. Uh, quick, quick example. Uh, I can give you a couple of examples depending on how much time we have. But uh, the, the first one near and dear to me is by Wednesday night, I used to, I've kind of gotten over this by now, but I I, uh, I used to notice that my kitchen counter was getting a little cluttered mm-hmm. that, um, or there were dishes in the sink or things like, and things like that, because I've been busy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It starts out great on Monday morning. Then by Wednesday night, things are just looking not quite so lemony fresh. And I'll give it, a, and I'm tired, mm-hmm. frankly. I'm yeah. tired. And then I'll say, I can't look at this another day. And I'll give it a quick clean, 15 minutes max is all it takes and the next day, magically, I have more energy. I feel uplifted. I feel buoyant. So I, that, that's just a quick personal example. And with working with clients, I have found over and over again that as we clear the physical clutter, the layers of the onion, if you will, start to unfold in the other four pillars of their life, which, as you know, are uh, your health, your habits, your heart, and your head. Hence, declutter the brain. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, um, d- does that help? Does, yeah, is- definitely. That answers the question. What you're really saying is um, they're intertwined. So if you have physical clutter, your mind is quite likely to be cluttered as well. Mm-hmm. And vice versa, if you've got mental clutter, how can you keep things sorted and safe? You can. Such a good yeah. point, Kitty. And the example you gave as well about, you know, people's lives are busy. Um, they, they get tired. People are human. Um, there's only so many hours in a day. So that's why I was asking, what does it look like? Because a few bits strewn about the living room may not be cluttered. That just, those are things just misplaced. Now, if right. they're collecting, yeah, if they're collecting dust or they're, you know, older than you or they're, you know, whatever they may be, then we may have to look at, well, why are we holding on to that? Right. Yeah. Right. So how do you then help people? Do people have to come to that decision, as you mentioned earlier, that, okay, I need help with this? And then what do what would you do? The first thing I get them to do is, we, or the first thing that we examine is, uh, first, why 
do you feel that you want to declutter? Now, people will usually say, well, I'm, I'm embarrassed to have people over or I want to use this, uh, this basement space in, in one example, this basement space as a play, play space for my kids. Um, uh, so either they they have the shame or a purpose, but to have success in any area of your life, including decluttering, I think that you have to have a strong why. And if, if someone comes to me on a, a on an initial call and says, "Well, I want it to look nice," well, why? I don't know. I just think I should. Okay, I don't take them as clients. Why? Because they're not going to have success. If you have a strong why with anything, and I'm sh I'm, I, I think you'll agree with me, that if you have a strong why on anything, then you'll have more success. Now, say for example, yes, you agree? <laughs> I didn't give you a chance. <laughs> intention. What's your intention? What do you want from this? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, if your intention is, and I have had this, I will give you a quick cute story a gentleman came to me with with clutter and it was bad uh, like the wife moved out and um he ended up moving over to her apartment <laughs> and his his uh, said well why 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 do you why do you want to take action he says well to make barbara happy uh to you know so that maybe we'll get to be able to live in that farmhouse together again because they bought it with the best of intentions 30 years ago kind of thing and it became unlivable but a funny thing happened that we started in i believe it was may and then september he started instead of he had been using the word we a lot now. Barbara was not uh, a part of of the decluttering process. He just he just she said, "You do it. You work with Kitty, and uh, we'll see what happens." Because she was dubious because they had tried things before, and around about September, yeah, he used the word "I." He said, "I want to whatever it was um, have this area clear." Uh, for and he actually had a reason. I said, Michael, do you realize that that's the first time you have ever said I? It's always been we or she. And that was a turning point for him. He started to really, really motor with it. Why? Because now it was his project. It wasn't her project. Do you, do you see what I mean here? Responsibility. That's what he did. He took responsibility. Yeah. 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 And that um, it just it just spills over into all parts of your life. So you asked me. I, I think I digressed there a little bit. Sorry. Um, so determine their why, and then here's the here's the funny part. Determine their why not. Mm. Why are you not? Do why do you have the clutter? Why are you not doing something about it? Well, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. But it always, always goes deeper than that. Quick example again, <laughs> uh, because because I don't know about you, but I, I I'm sure you're you're that you and your listeners can really it's it makes more sense when you know that someone else has experienced it. Right. Um, a lady, her mother had passed and this lady was charged with dealing with all of the the uh, postmortem paperwork. And so she got through the basics, but there was a lot that still had to be gone through just in case there was something important. And I can actually relate to this myself because my father passed last year. So... I said, she said, I can keep everything else in my home tidy. I have been so good for 40 years of their marriage. She said, why on earth can I not do this simple thing? And I said, well, let's go and work on it together. And because that's what I do. I take people by the hand for the first few sessions and just kind of get them over the hump a little bit. And... So we go through, I have a one system, which we may get to talk about. Um, and so we went, we started going through, through the papers one by one. 
And then she stopped and she said, you know, I remember where my mother was sitting in the room and the lawyer, where he was sitting and what he was saying as I look at this paper. I said, there you go. That's that's why you're having such a hard time doing it. Ghosts. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Memorabilia, I always say that word wrong, memorabilia, like the Gene Simmons thing or the Kiss thing, uh, Mm -hmm. holding on to those memories. Mm. Yeah, and they were so painful that, of course, she didn't want to deal with it. Of course, she would keep saying, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, when she realized that, uh, she she plowed through those papers, and that was it. (laughs) Yes. So what's your why not? What's your why not? So what's your why and what's your why not? Excellent. Because the first bit is motivation, isn't it? Why? What, what's my reward? I mean, we, you know, Maslow started this whole thing. We're, we're all built on reward system. What's in it for right. me? What's in it for me? I created the mess, but what's in it for me to clean it up? <laughs> that's how we are as human beings. Yes, so that's the motivation, and then the why not. Why are you finding it difficult? Why is it a challenge to move those papers or to go through them? And and it's the memory. It was the memories for her. It was really interesting. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. If you have, uh, say, for example, um, in, in, in his later days, my father and I had a bit of a troubled relationship, and I'm an only child, and the only person who can go through, all, who went through all of his stuff, and I had help, uh, I had to get a couple of friends to, to do, to help. But there, there can be resentment that you have to go through this stuff. So the little kid in you says, stomps its little foot and says, I don't want to. <laughs> That's another good point. Mm. So many emotions and it's all, it, it's, it all starts between the ears. Absolutely. So that's the mental clutter that I, I would think people aren't often aware of, I guess, what, why. And when you step in and say, okay, let's look at this the the why what's the motivation the why not then they have to look at you know things that are underneath the surface or unconscious Mm -hmm. i want to just quickly touch upon something you mentioned when we first started the interview and that is the issue of clutter and i was saying it's very different from hoarding so for our listeners out there and our viewers i wanted to quickly say they are two very different things. And the DSM-5 has recently, it's very recent, introduced uh, hoarding, not clutter. It's hoarding, mm-hmm. and it is a subset of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. It is a mental disorder, so it is, it is diagnosable. Hoarding is, not clutter. Now, I know that people will say, well, what's the difference? Well, there is a difference. And the difference is, it's huge, because I've worked with, in my work, I've worked with people who are hoarders. And it's something I hope many of you never have to see. Your place can become uninhabitable. It can become infested with vermin or other things. Uh, There could be no space to move about. But here's the difference. The difference is the person does not see it as such. The person does not believe that there's anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with this place. I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. There's nothing wrong. I, the, the One example would be someone said to me, I know where everything is. <laughs> And yet, the, it was uninhabitable. They, we, uh, you know, they had to get out of there immediately. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Now, with clutter, people know there's stuff everywhere and that they've got to do something about it. So, with clutter, people know that there's something wrong and that they've got to move everything out of the way. It would be to their benefit. But hoarding, people don't know that anything's wrong. They completely disagree. And that's why it's a mental health issue. 
it is a it's a difficulty in weighing that up and understanding so i just wanted to quickly say that for people listening out there and what kitty does is she deals with clutter um for people so let's talk about your one system because you created this to help people what does that entail ah uh, <laughs> i love this question thank you the, um because it's near and dear to my heart and the the one system i discovered uh by accident can help in all five pillars of your life that that we were discussing before now it's it's very simple and the reason i developed it it, it actually i didn't develop it it evolved uh, i just didn't know another way it was the only way that my adhd brain could could handle any of my own clutter and then and then subsequently any anybody else's in homes that i was cleaning or whatever was to break it down to one now the one system is deceptively simple it's one um one room at a time one area of that room at a time and one thing at a time and get, do i have time to go through those briefly yes all right um one room at a time what do i mean by that i i mean uh don't i suggest that you don't uh start in for example your office and then okay i'll do a little bit in here and then go over to the spare bedroom or the basement or whatever i suggest that you stick with one room um determine your why and pick the most important and stick with it why for two reasons partly because from a purely practical point of view you by the time you've come back from room number two and you start getting you know okay where was i what was i doing you're getting into character as it were and so you wasted 15 minutes <laughs> just just getting back into where you were getting back into the flow uh whereas if you stick with the one then you know exactly what what you're doing now one area of that room at a time exact same concept now it can be difficult to make the decision as to what area of that room even just before our call i was on on one with the client and she didn't know where to start in the basement so that was um that can be the tough part well i'll do a bit here then i'll do a bit over there if you stick with the one area and you're going to see how simple this is and it's almost like too simple is if you stick with that one area then again you know where you are but you get that all important feeling of momentum and confidence creeping back in that yes i can yes i can because i can see the results with my own eyes i can see what i'm doing and that i'm that i'm making a difference whereas if you're spread out all over the place i don't think in my opinion you uh, uh i'd love your thoughts on this uh, i think it's more important to just stick with the one area yeah, it sounds like a good plan because as you say per perception is everything you see so you you might perceive that nothing's getting done as you've rightly said if you keep hopping about if you stick to one thing you'll see the progress right in front of your eyes yeah good plan never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now thank you for your support you make this podcast possible now back to the show it's a difficult concept for people to i said that it's overly simple and and um it's it's not the holy grail but many times people uh overlook the simple things and they they feel like they have to make it difficult for themselves and it's got to be this huge major project now here here's where we get to one thing at a time now is it tedious yes is it time consuming i'm afraid so but is it the one one uh method that will uh get get you decluttered for life yes and i'll tell you a quick story my very you're gonna laugh my very first client very first de virtual decluttering client uh she uh, she had a 
very large L-shaped desk. And she was an executive. And it was just covered six inches, at least, of papers over the entire desk. You did not know what color the desk was. And she said, I have to do something about this because my uh, I have to hire an assistant and she just won't know what, what to do. She had hired an assistant. That's what it was. And <laughs> that was just, where do I begin kind of thing. So our, our very first appointment, I said, okay, well, let's start with this pile of paper. Okay, pick up the first one. And she looked at me like I was from Venus and said, you're out of your mind. I'm not going through this one by one. And I didn't know what to do. My very first client, I'd already taken her money. <laughs> I didn't know another way. Well, she relented. And uh, I guess she felt, she felt the fear. I don't know. But anyway, um, so she started going through these papers one at, one at a time. And then after about five minutes, she starts to say, why do I have all of these bank statements? My accountant doesn't need them. I don't need them. I can have them online. Uh, okay, so she starts rifling through things. And then she sees utility bills in this in these papers old ones at that she said i don't need these either okay i can get them online and the so she, she actually made it through that entire desk i think it was three weeks um and it it, it was phenomenal why because she was indeed she had retrained her brain that I don't need this, I don't need this. Her brain was reaching, as, as you know, the brain automatically starts to look for solutions to your plight. But here's the best part. She told me that, oh, there were a bunch of trade magazines that she hadn't, that she hadn't read. And they were about eight bucks a pop at the time. And she had never read them. They just, and they just sat there. She was in the store. Her arm automatically reached for the magazine. She said, well, wait a minute now. I just threw away but 50, 60 bucks worth of magazines. I'll buy it next month. So she said, I'm just going to buy it every two or three months. I uh, The industry doesn't change that rapidly that I need to do this. So no clutter coming in. Retraining brain. Don't need. Save money. All of the above, and I, I I I like that story, especially since it was my very first client. <laughs> Great result! What a brilliant result! And so the one system we look at that, and what else is involved in the one? Is that the one system? Because it's brilliant. Well, when it comes to um, I I mentioned that it can be adaptable to to all five pillars. Yes, that's it. And this was something that I learned. It was, it was just before my, my father's passing. And I, I was getting, I was getting very busy in business. And the, you know, the busier you are, then you start taking on new, more projects, uh, interviews, all of this kind of stuff. And you have to keep all that straight. But what's happening at 530 in the morning when you're brushing your teeth and getting ready for your day, your brain starts to say, at least mine did. Uh, <clears throat> uh, did I email that person? Did I write down to phone that person? Did I, did I, should I, would I, blah, 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 all of these things start to crumble, I, uh, um, jumble up in your brain. And you're tired by the time I found that I was tired by the time I got to my desk, simply as a result of the, you know, the little battery icon at the top of your phone going, yeah, okay. Um, and I thought there's got to be a better way. So I accepted that, okay, I'm going to have these thoughts in the morning. Oh, yes. And then the panic, by the time you get to your desk, because number one, you're tired. Number two, you just don't know where to turn. You're overwhelmed. And it's in your head. It's not something that you can see. It's in, it's in your head. All right. What do I do now? I don't know where to start. Now, you can. There are two options. You can either say, 
I don't know where to start, so I'll do I'll do some scrolling on Facebook. At least I'll be doing something. Or and how many times do we spend all day doing busy work because we don't know what to do? Mm-hmm. Or you can say, all right, what is the one most important thing that needs to uh, to get done? Or what is the one and or what is the one category? Now, I, I picked on uh, people. Which people? Everybody's going to be different. But mine was which people need me first. Say, for, for example, my assistant. What does she need from me so that she can do her job? Or if you have a partner or a child or a cat, <laughs> what do, do, what do the living beings need from me? I'll look after them and then I can, and then I'll look after other things. One of my mentors, he said that would just totally overwhelm me. He, he, his one thing I believe is emails. And, but if you, if you narrow it down to that one thing, then, then you can breathe that sigh of relief. Okay, I got that done. What's next? And take one category. And do you do you see where how do you feel about kind of narrowing things down so that you don't um, so that you don't feel that that overwhelm? Yeah, I think that's the only way to go. Certainly, you know, when we look at therapy, we we look at tackling People may come with a whole shopping list of problems, but you can only kind of deal with one thing at a time. And it's, I like to say it's like a stairwell effect. So as soon as you put one foot on the stairway, you know you're going somewhere because you've got one foot on there. So just trust that. Just concentrate on your steadiness for that for the time being there. And then you get there. So I completely agree. That's brilliant, though. So just one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. And I know that you talk about the space and the, the brain, how the brain works and the space that clutter takes up in our mind as well. And you just described that, that you could be thinking about loads of things. And by the time you arrive at work, you're, you're done. That you just mm-hmm. can't do anything. And so physically, I would think that could interrupt your, your sleep, um, how tired you get during the day, your concentration, um, your adaptability, and your ability to perform, I would think. Is that the case with the, your business clients? Because you, you see people, a lot of people in business. Well, yes, many, many of, of, um, my clients are entrepreneurs who by, by definition have to wear quite, quite a few hats until they, until they have, have a team of one or two or however, however many. And they're, they're the only way to do it is, well, number one, you won't be able to just understand and accept that you will never get it all done. Something is not going to get done. So, but it is crucial to your financial success to get the right things done and celebrate, celebrate that you got the right things done. And that, um, what's, what, what's my other favorite expression is progress over perfection. Uh, it's, it, you, um, maybe you didn't get all of the right things done that you needed to, but you stayed away from the the do, the doom scrolling or the um, cat videos or whatever it is, and it is easy, especially for an ADHD or uh, and as you know, many many entrepreneurs. Well, thirty one study said thirty percent of entrepreneurs have been diagnosed with ADHD. So what does that bring with it? Squirrel, squirrel. Um, uh, shiny object syndrome and and or just all of a sudden for me it's 45 minutes I can set my watch by when I by when I stop concentrating on a project when I just go yeah I, I non-compassment just like I can't think so uh, walk away from it come back and or do something do something else using a different brain brain part 
whether it's writing or emails. To me, those are two different different skills. Um, but you 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 learn to train yourself to um, to just focus on getting the right things done. No, that's a good point. And do you find that people get discouraged a little bit because they want to, like your your client said, "There's you must be, I'm not doing this whole desk. Um, that sounded to me like being a little bit discouraged, um, perhaps didn't realize that they could do it. And um, so do you find that that's the case with a lot of people? They're discouraged when they start? The reason I'm in business at all is because people get discouraged, much like when they when they come to you and they they just don't don't know where to turn. They know that they need they need help, but they're not even sure if, what it is. The big thing when it comes uh, a big thing when it comes to decluttering is people say, "I should be able to dot dot dot. Why can't I?" dot, 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 what's wrong with me? All of these negative thoughts that are coming into your head, you're shooting yourself in the foot before you even begin. And if you can, um, when when you start feeling that way, then that spirals into overwhelm and discouragement. And the idea is, as I mentioned before, just giving yourself some, some momentum, seeing confidence, Seeing the con uh, confidence when you can see that, yes, I can. And if you're needing to prove it to somebody who says, nah, you'll never be able to do that, it's going to go right back to, to uh, yeah, those helpful, helpful <laughs> friends and family members. Yeah. Um, when you can say, yes, I can, and I can keep it that way for life and I don't I, I don't need to prove it to you or any or anyone else. I'm gonna prove it to myself because I want to, which comes back to your why. Oh, yes, I can see that now. And what is the key ingredient to to being successful with decluttering? What's the key? Does that go back to the want? The why is very important, although that gentleman, he started with one with one why and, and it morphed into another. And actually, for most of my clients, that's what's happened. Most of them have been with me for three years. Wow. Because, and you say, well, aren't they decluttered by now? Yes and no. Sometimes you have backslides. Life life happens, but when you keep finding, we just keep finding more areas of the brain to declutter. For example, um, I'm pre pleased to report that after three years, uh, one client has finally accepted payment for her uh, for she's a stained glass artist. And she's been considering, and well, I'll get to it, and humming and hawing and having no confidence. Well, now she finally has the confidence to put herself out there. But I said to her very recently, when she was about to accept payment for this, it was eight hundred dollars. Uh, she now I said, do you think that you could possibly have considered this when we started with your with your home that was so cluttered you could barely walk through it? And she said, oh, good Lord, no, no, not at all. You're just peeling back the layers of the onion. I really hope that that answered your question because I went off on a couple of tangents there. Well, not at all. It's all related because Kitty, yes, I wonder it is. If for you that people may even come in and say, look, my childhood was totally disorganized. Um and I can't, there's no way. And this is why I did. I'm imagining, because obviously I've heard it from other people, but that's one of the reasons why they find themselves having clutter because it wasn't that they had clutter in the home growing up. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Right. But the clutter, they now have clutter because their minds are cluttered and they haven't sorted out. And there's a part of them that may not believe that they deserve to have a beautiful, nice, clean space. Mm -hmm. Have you mm -hmm. found that as well? Huge part of it. 
And I've, I've even, uh, it, it's been uncovered for me by my coach, uh, something, something very similar. Do I actually deserve to have a beautiful, a beautiful home? Uh, are people going to laugh at me? And it sounds really, really bizarre. And why would anybody think that? But we get some weird messages put in, put into our heads, especially before the age of seven. As you know, this is your field. Another quick ex- example: uh, a client. She, she, uh, we started working together because she said, "I don't know how." I do not know. I've been ill most of my life, so I don't know. I've never been taught how to how to keep a home tidy. My mother or whoever, mother, husband, um, always did it for me, and I want to learn how to do it myself. But I just, I've, I, people have always been saying to me, "Oh, there, there, it's okay. You don't need to do this," and. She she wanted desperately to do do that kind of an unusual why, but good for her, wouldn't you agree? For her? and saying no, um, people are telling me that I can't, and I'm going to prove that I can. There's so many reasons. So it's a is it such a such a tangled web as <laughs> as it were. Everything just intertwines with with everything else, and it it does affect once you once you get certain habits in place, and it, which I think is key for me. I I rely on structure. Yeah, uh, yeah structure is important, and a lot of times that has been missing for people in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be the opposite way as well, which then goes into OCD. If you're too structured and too rigid or too. I wanted to ask you, though, philosophically, Kitty, for a moment, just kind of going, it may all it may all come together anyway. It may all be, be to do with cluster. But if you could live in any particular time at all, going backwards or maybe future progressing, Does any specific time stand out? Like for me, I find Paris the 20s very intriguing. I probably wouldn't want to live there because, you know, there weren't the medical advances that we have now and people died a lot. But would anything stand out? Are you drawn to a decade, a period in time? Um, the, The 50s. Wow. Uh, and I didn't think I'd be able to answer that question. I really didn't. I drew a blank and then I went, went the fifties simply because I, I love the cars and the music. And it, it was a, however, the, the cars and the music were great and the clothing was, was great. All of these things. And of course it was post war. So everything was, was exciting and, and, fresh and uh, the war was is still a memory so people were determined not to to enjoy life now after years of misery and that was great however darren hardy uh pointed out that the 50s were also a very troubled time uh race relations um Oh, good. I, I can't think of what, what else he said was going on in the 50s. But sometimes you'll hear people say the good old days. Okay. What was, what was, what was good about them? But this, that's the short answer to your question. And I don't think you want to go down the rabbit hole. Every era has its positives and negatives, I think. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yes, the 50s, I don't think, get enough shine. Yes, the, the cars, I mean, wow. Yes, and the clothing, the fashions. Yeah. Music, of course, that was exploding then. You know, so, yeah, you're right. Um, Wow, yeah. It was fun. It yeah, was fun. Yes, it looks like it. But as you say, there was. there's always something, and, you know, we're, we're advancing, of course, but... Has there ever been a time where you thought, okay, I've done as much as I can do here with this person. Um, there, there's no more progress that's going to be made here, and I'm going to have to end it. Has that ever happened? Actually, that used to happen um, more when 
before this current group of clients that have been with me for three years, they started as a group and I guess they're, they're, they most, most of them stayed on in a subscription program or, or renewals or, or whatever. Uh, when I used to have a, an eight week program, eight, eight or 12 week program, it just depends on what their original goal is. And we determined at the, at the beginning um, that yes, we we can go on uh, for forever. Uh, I've had one that I met in January of 2019, and she's she's still with me. Um, but uh, we determined at the beginning, okay, what do we want to accomplish in this time together? What do what do we want at the end of the day? Then that gives me parameters to to judge to guide them to the right places uh but now one of their goals might be i want to improve my relationship with my husband well all right we'll get some decluttering done there as some physical decluttering but then i'm probably going to be asking you know, going a little bit deeper and we may even pull some feng shui in and what? and start to re, re, uh, energize the bedroom, for example, or the dining room table, where neither of you sit and eat. You eat in front of the TV. Why? Because you don't want to talk to each other. Underneath it all, you're afraid to talk to each other. That is why the dining room table is cluttered. And yes, I am quoting a certain example here of two people, not just one one couple, but two couples. I think that's classic. Yeah. Well, oh, you mentioned feng shui, which I love. Uh, yeah. So you use feng shui as well. I do. I do. Wow. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, it takes my feng shui mem mentor. He said, I've been at it 20 years. And he says, I'm, I'm a baby compared to how much there is to know. So it's very complicated, but even just a few, uh, a few little basic things can, can really transform your life. But even in uh, every feng shui book I've ever read says you have to declutter first. You do. You must declutter. So I've got a ritual twice a year. I declutter. I give loads to charity. So British Heart Association is my main one. Um, scope, lots of different places. They're on the UK, of course. But yes, mm. all those things that you're getting rid of can go to charity. They can be, you open the, 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 uh, interview talking about one man's trash is another man's treasure. So those things, people love charity shops. And so all your old things can go, they can live on, but in Absolutely. someone else's home. <laughs> It doesn't make uh, some of the decisions any easier. Say, for example, you've got ticket stubs from, and this you're, you're not going to be sending this to the, into the donation center to the charity. But um, just as an example, you've got a ticket stub from going to the rock concert with your best friend, or you have tickets for the from the Shakespeare play that you went to with your parents. Now, that's kind of a loaded question, isn't it? Which that's one? A, yeah, that's very different. That is uh, like having a photograph. That's a memory that you want to keep, really, because I've got ticket stubs. <laughs> so, yes, I'm not giving those away. But, you know. So, yes, you're right. Those are memories, things you want to show people, things you want to show your family. Um, yes, you're right. So, we're not talking about that. We're talking about, I love your example of the magazines. So you're talking about magazines that you, oh yes. And you mentioned that the lady just automatically went to buy it. And I did want to say, yeah, those, those habits, those unconscious habits that we have okay. where you just buy a load of stuff. I think during the pandemic, we all were tested in that area because suddenly we all bought because there was fear right fear of loss fear of not having and i would think that that's also an aspect of clutter that people buy massive you know, multi buys they call them mm -hmm. they fear they're gonna miss out or they won't have enough uh, yeah yeah fear fear of want fear fear of scarcity um did you in the uk have a run on toilet paper 
That was huge. That was huge. I think it was worldwide. It was worldwide. And people got up at 6 a.m. and queued for, you know, at stores. But, oh, yes, yeah, still huge. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was worldwide, Kitty. Let's talk about your service. So you, you coach people. So if somebody wants to get some help from you, what do they do? I know they go to your website and your the links will all be in the show notes. So they can click on that. And I saw that you offer several programs that people can get. So they have a call with you first. How does it work? I get on. It's a, it's a quick and free call. And we, we just get on and I ask their, their why and their why not. And most importantly, their specific, uh, um, their, their lifestyle. Because the person who has a husband and two kids is not going to have the same needs as the retired woman. All right. Who goes to church once a week and kind of thing. Everybody has specific needs. Everything I do is tailored to those needs because one size does not fit all. And if many people with ADHD are drawn to, drawn to me because they tend to accumulate more clutter. Why? Because they've got busier brain, many times have very, very busy brains. And like I said before, the, the, the squirrel shiny object syndrome. Oh, a new craft. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, and clutter, and clutter can really accumulate with that. So we go through the why in your personal situation and then we um we decide then and there really okay do are, are we a fit to work together okay well let's uh let's get you started and do do a good intake like a full in-depth what are what's what's your health what is your what are your habits we go through all of the pillars and we have that and then we pick one based on that I should say I'm going to uh, backtrack. Based on that, we will either s start, uh, many times I like to start in the entrance because that's the first thing you see when you come home and your shoulders sag and go. <laughs> and the last thing you see when you're off to work in the morning, if you're, wor if you're working at the office, then that sits in your subconscious all day, I believe. I, I believe it sits there. So either the entrance or if it's a relationship problem, well, then your bedroom. And if we can't decide if the, if the client is resistant and they just say, I, I, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know what to tell you. Then I say, all right, let's just stop for a moment here. What is don't even think I you don't even take more than five seconds to think about the answer to this question. What is the thing that is driving you nuts the most? Bam, dining room table. I remember this woman. Um well, let's start there. Your subconscious knows. Perfect. But what if they're because you're in beautiful Canada? What if they are in New Zealand? What if they are in England? What if they? Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, sorry. I kind of I, I skipped a step. Uh, <laughs> but you're always saying you do Zoom or Teams oh. remote sessions. I, yes, yes. Every I don't I don't go into people's homes anymore because virtual dis decluttering uh, has been described to me by a realtor friend when I first started doing it five, five years ago as a less intrusive. This is how he saw it: a less intrusive, more focused way to get rid of years of clutter. Why? Because you don't have to clean for the cleaning lady. There's no shame. There's a bit of shame, but that shame is only around that one room. You don't have to worry as opposed to having a professional organizer, a professional organizer, I'll stress that, come into your home and you just want to crawl under the sofa because you're so embarrassed. No, um, we just focus on even just that one area, if you don't want to show me the whole room, that's the beauty of of, of Zoom Brilliant. kind of calls that you have that degree of separation. We're close, but we're not on top of each other, and it it has worked. It is it, everyone has has reported that it's comfortable. I started doing it at 
2018, I found three other practitioners in the world. In the world. Three other. And I still can't find that many who yes. actually. Yeah. Funny that, isn't it? But, but yes, it's, um, it's intriguing work. And I, I want to also say, as we come to the end of the interview, because I think people will get a lot out of this, what you've described is that if you do suffer from overwhelm, if you feel you cannot get things organized, sometimes you need a helping hand. And it may not have to be therapy. We're not looking at you having to go see a psychiatrist or anything, or psychologist, mm -hmm. or counselor. You can have coaching to help you. You can have someone who specializes like you, Kitty, uh, in how to declutter, where to start, your why, your one as well, all of that, and look at a way forward. Just having that can get you started. And I also wanted to say to you, um, I'm, I'm really pleased that you are, are able to talk about your ADHD and you're able to help other people who also may have ADHD. And some may not, but some may. And you're able to use your personal experience to help people move forward. And that's just amazing. So thank you for that, because I think people will relate to you. And um, you found your niche. You found the work that you're meant to be doing to help people. So well yes. done. When's yes. the book? When are you going to write your book? Well, as a matter of fact, I've um, done three chapters in compilation books, and the the very next thing we're we're doing we're launching um, um, declutter for homeschooling tomorrow, and the very next thing is to uh, do a book um, about basically decluttering a a to z. And then something that my my uh, my agent doesn't know about is uh, diary of of um, a declutterer's move. What not to do? Oh, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, they know now after they watch this interview, they'll know now. But that that's what I wanted to mention about the homeschool bit because I read about that that you're doing. So yes, now that's going to be excellent to help people as well. Because it starts when we're young anyway. Kitty, thank you so much. Was there anything you wanted to add? I, I, just to, to your point there, uh, our children are very, very in, uh, affected by clutter. And we, did, we don't, we probably don't realize it, but the reason two clients came to me in COVID was that they, and they said, we have to, we suddenly have to homeschool our kids and our place is a mess and we don't want our kids to grow up like we are. So start training them early and then they, they, they don't have the messiest dorm room, uh, kind of thing. The idea. And so I just wanted to get that out there that I think is very important. You know, children learn better in, in a clear and uncluttered environment, whether that's in school or at home. Ooh. And the the final thought, can I give a final thought? Please. Is your clutter did not accumulate overnight. It will not go away overnight. So cut yourself some slack and just do it one at a time. I love that. Oh, that that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. That is fantastic. Um, I'm someone who has to have clean, clear around me or else I can't think or function. So I'm kind of the opposite. But I have had moments of, okay, I've had those boxes for a few years. Uh, it's time to go through them and get rid of some stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's the difference, guys, with hoarding. You wouldn't have that thought. You'd pile on more boxes and more boxes and more boxes. So that's the difference between a bit of clutter and a hoarder. Kitty, you've been fantastic. Thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it. Learned a lot from you as well about decluttering. Uh, guys, all of Kitty's links will be in the show notes, where to follow her as well on Instagram and Facebook and her website as well. And you can sign up through her website if you want to have some 
some support. Right. And they can download my PDF there as well. Saw that as well. You just add your email and download the free PDF. That's brilliant. Thank you once again and see you again soon. Your mental health is a priority. Nine Pitches Therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind, body and soul. These self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing you what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert in this field, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations that can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Nine Peaches Therapies, Holistic Therapeutic Consultancy. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.